So welcome. This is actually with our first English uh, podcast from the Progress Bar, and we got the host here from the Nibit, the IN. Welcome. Thanks. And actually, the my first question would be like, uh, can you tell us the what is the what is the Nibit go and what is it for? Sure. Um, so my bit as a whole um, is really just a, we've designed like products for like an open decentralized world um, around investing, governance, workflow type things. Um, but the company originally started with MyBitGo, which is an investment platform focused around like the machine economy and IoT. Um, and really, the vision behind it was that as machines and automation start um, replacing people's jobs, we really care about who owns these machines. And under like the current uh, financial models and investment models, you'd have large centralized companies like you know, Goldman or it could be like BMW or a machine um, producer owning all of these machines. And we just didn't see that as really the way we wanted society to go into the future because as you have machines taking people's jobs away so they don't have cash flow coming in, and you have all the machines owned by a few companies, um, all the revenue and money is flowing into that like 1% of the 1%. Okay. And like we just didn't want to see that income disparity in the world, you know, get even more um, like split up where wealth is controlled by even fewer and fewer yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what we decided to do is, you know, create something based on um, Ethereum smart contracts where anybody could invest in machines and then as the machines generate revenue, like somebody pays to use a self-driving car or a Bitcoin ATM mm -hmm. um, or anything in like smart lock enabled, like a storage room or something like that, okay. um, then revenue would just get split up right to the investors. And, you know, we know that in a perfect world, you know, everybody would have an equal share and stuff, but Definitely, yeah. it's not realistic. And, you know, you're still going to have these centralized companies with the most money owning a majority of the machines. But it's all about just providing the opportunity to people. Because, um, like, right now, somebody like me couldn't just go and, like, buy a stake in, like, a drive now car or something. Um, yeah. And we just want to give people the opportunity and the accessibility to have those investment opportunities. Okay. Um, And we just kind of saw that as the future of having to really, you know, decentralize that because automation's already really starting to like penetrate industries and like manufacturing and stuff. Okay. And it's just happening underneath us. And <laughs> we wanted to really push it now and get it out there. Okay. And so can can you tell us the how MyBit Go works for the people that know the MyBit? Yeah, exactly. So there's really three roles in it and our goal is just to be inclusive of everybody in society. So you have the investors who are providing the capital. You have the IoT partners, the people that actually produce like the hardware, like Bitcoin ATMs yeah. or whatever. And then you have the asset managers. And these are, you know, in a perfect world, you would have robots taking care of the machines. If Definitely. something needed to be fixed, it would trigger a robot, but we're not there yet. So you need human intervention on that right now to like oversee it take care of and take care of it. Um, so if, and it gives you an opportunity if you don't have money to invest. Okay. Um, what you get in return for managing the machine is a percentage of the revenue. So it gives kind of like everybody in society a role and a way to generate money and become a part of it. And we encourage all the asset managers to take the money they're getting and invest it in machines so they can okay. transition from a manager to an investor. Um, and yeah, those are really the three roles. So I mean, how it works is like, it's a mixture between like a stockbroker platform and like a Kickstarter, like a crowdfunding mm -hmm. thing. And um, Once uh, an IoT company is approved to be listed, you would go on as, or an asset manager would go on um, and see what a, what was available in their location. Okay. Um, any like licenses or legal fees, like anything like that, they would do in advance, upload it, um, and then it would open up to investors to crowdfund it normally over like a 30-day period. Um, if the money's not reached in 30 days, the smart contracts just send it all back to the investors. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah. If it is achieved, then the money goes straight to the IoT company that we partnered with that will then, um, you know, deliver it, install it, all of that. And then it's the asset manager's responsibility um, to oversee everything and keep it going from there. And then the thing that we just really like of it is... You know, normally with stuff like this, you would have to go through like a private fund or a hedge fund, which has all these like minimum capital yeah. requirements and rules and stuff. And it's just not inclusive. So this is lets anybody invest. And then on the payout side, 
you don't have a fund who like aggregates all the money and then has to like send it out to people mm-hmm. um, and like takes like a 20% fee to do that. Yeah, you know, yeah. we, the smart contracts like right as you <laughs> like use a Bitcoin ATM, the transaction fee just gets split up based on um, what percentage of it you own all in like real time. Okay. Um, and yeah, and that's like our favorite part of it because you get paid quick and you know, nobody else controls the money. It's all just technology. Okay, I, I found on your web uh, webpage, the mybit.io, that uh, you have like few applications already built top mm-hmm. of the mybit. And uh, what is your actually your favorite? That was actually most of use of. Um, so my favorite is mybitgo because it was like the initial reason we started the company. <laughs> um, that's still on testnet though. It'll go mainnet in Q2 of this year. Okay, um, but we. Um, You know, MyBit Go is built on an SDK that we created that was really just designed to build any type of like financial or wealth management type of application on Ethereum really easily. Okay. Um, some members from our community have created like different small use cases on that, like um, trust funds or like will applications. So if you die, like where your crypto gets distributed to, yeah. um, some payroll stuff. There were people working on like um, IP management and like art type things and tokenizing that. Um, yeah. So. There's on the SDK. There's quite a bit of things being built, um, and then you know we've also branched out as we've kind of learned that our main goal is decentralization above everything, even above like blockchain. Um, it's just blockchain. We view it as like a tool to achieve decentralization, okay. and the industry was just missing a lot of fundamental tools and stuff to actually achieve that. Okay. So we started working a lot more on governance structures, DAOs, bounty marketplaces. Um, just so you know, we're building this decentralized network and applications, but we're doing it all through our centralized team, mm-hmm. centralized funding, and we're trying to build tools to break that up so you can actually build and manage it in a decentralized way. Okay, okay. And w- what are actually like your biggest interest now in the MyBit, right? Uh, um, so what I'm really leading this year with the company is migration into a network of DAOs. So we want to take MyBit Go and break up um, different components of it, like listing new IoT partners. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's us doing the integration; it's us approving it, and we just don't like having us being responsible for anything centralized. Okay. You know, it defeats the point <laughs> of building decentralized stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, so we're making it. We're like um, we're opening up an API so anybody can integrate. Um, and in return, if like somebody brings an IoT partner in, then okay. they'll get you know some sort of compensation as like a percentage of returns or something like that. So, um, so and the community will be able to vote to either approve the partner or not. Okay. Um, so, so actually, you're yeah, you're opening the marketplace for the partners, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and that's like one of the components of it. And then beyond that, we're really just turning our goal in 2019 is to ship all of our products and start really transitioning them into DAOs so they can just run in perpetuity without relying on us solely. Um, and you know that's from specific products like Go ha- will be its like own DAO for certain things, but then we also want to make just the overall company, like the funding held in a DAO, um, we're using Aragon right now for like voting um, so people could propose new projects, new things like that, um, and really just dictate the direction of it. Okay. So okay, and what 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 are you know, so far uh, mm, your biggest uh, pain in the ass during the my development? Actually, you are on the market like for one year, if I'm right. Yeah, we started it two years ago, um, okay. and we started yeah. mainnet releasing certain things about six months ago or so, like Q3 mm-hmm. 2018. Okay. Um, the biggest pain is just a lack of you know usable technology. I want name any names because we're all like responsible for this and we all have our flaws but there's a lot of um, you know tech infrastructure level technology that building you know decentralized applications relies on and a lot of it is cool but it's missing just fundamental things okay. um, needed to actually put something into production and that's probably been the most painful thing for us is you know we partner with somebody to provide some technology on the infrastructure level and it's missing has a big gap so we have to slow down launch like a couple months as I we see. build out and fill in the missing pieces and um, that's that's kind of like the frustrating thing because mm-hmm. we're very proactive with what we do and we really want to ship products out to get new users into the ecosystem so we see a lot of companies kind of sitting back waiting for somebody else to fill in the gaps and it's mm-hmm. just not happening Um, yeah. Okay. So that's 
that's probably been our biggest thing. And, you know, just lack of um, organization. Yeah. But you have that with decentralized, you know, like it's, it's very good for security, okay. but you lose a lot of efficiency when you decentralize. So yeah. we're kind of like seeing that lack of like organization and stuff throughout the industry and it's kind of frustrating. Okay, and um, okay, and now I will just uh, speed up the discussion. That what, what is actually your your favorite DAO framework and why? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so free. favorite <laughs> is a tough word. Uh, I don't think it exists yet. But okay, <laughs> okay. So what's actually most usable? Yeah, DAO framework right now, right now? Um, most usable is we use Aragon, but it's mainly for voting and testing out a lot of the things with um, like managing identity. Mm -hmm. We're having to do on ourselves because there's no really identity solution that works. Um, with smart contracts the way we need them to right now. Okay. Um, and th the biggest thing why we need identity is we want to make sure that votes can't be bought so people with more money don't have more voting rights. And really okay. the only way to enforce that is through a real identity. Um, so yeah, I'd say Aragon now. Some other um, like DAO stack and some other things we're monitoring, but it's just kind of not at the level right now we need to mm -hmm. ship it to production. Okay. Um, so we're just curious but I wouldn't say I have a favorite yet it's a, okay. it's probably coming in the future uh, oh yeah on the record right like what was actually your your favorite uh, no uh, what do you think about the, the quadrating voting on DAOs and during this funding issues um, how can could it have the impact it's a step in the right direction but okay. the thing with governance is I think we just need to get more testing and more people on it you okay. know we're doing a lot of like theoretical models right now but I think to really get DAOs going and like find a governance model that works, we need to push it out into the wild with small applications and just really see what it works. Because um, quadratic voting, it's cool. It could work, um, but the, there's always like, you know, like side markets that can be open. There's so many of these variables that okay. I think we really need to, as an industry, just like focus a lot on getting it out there and then you know offering pretty big bounties for people that find holes in it and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, we really like, you know, giving like one person one vote for a token and then playing around with like some multipliers because it's you have to meet this balance like where you want everybody to have equal votes and you don't want people with more money to like control everything. Like faking. But okay. yeah, but at the same time, if you have one dollar in and a hundred thousand, you should have I a see. little bit bigger of a vote. Okay. If it's a hundred thousand, so we're playing around with like some locking and some multiplier ways, um, and just kind of some stuff like that. But I mean, even at this stage, it's very theoretical, and I don't know. It's it's one of the most complex thing, and we all think of governance on, you know, kind of like based on current economies and stuff we're used to. Okay. And you know, part of me really thinks that to really solve governance, we need to abstract away from everything that we've learned related to like politics and governance structures and <laughs> just do something new but I don't know it's yeah it's and, one of the complex and, and, and things. Do, do you think that the governance and execution should be separated or or not meaning like governance could automatically trigger something yeah um, I think long term yeah okay. but short term yeah, I think uh, there needs to be some gap in the middle because that could just completely destroy a project and it's something we're playing around with right now because if you implement the wrong governance structure and it automatically executes, it could just wipe out a whole project. Oh, and, okay. Uh, but I think I think long term for a lot of things it could execute it. But also I don't know if voting is needed on every little thing. You might save votes for bigger things and like, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think if there could be like something so called a cumulative voting? Right. Actually, actually you can win a vote for the next round or something like that if. If you are voting right, so um, like, like gaming the voting, I I think I'm kind of against that because of like the incentive structures mm -hmm. because okay. you're basically penalized for voting the wrong way and a lot of votes are just opinion based. Mm -hmm. So you I think with that you would get too much of people following the crowd I and see. you wouldn't okay. get the correct answers off of it like that. What we kind of like, um, it's very hard to implement, but kind of like contribution based voting. Mm -hmm. um, so not necessarily like your social ranking or like reputation based, but how much you contribute to a project, not just development, but like marketing, feedback, like different things would give you more voting rights. So it's not financial based, okay, um, but contribution based on it. And that's something like we're exploring, but that's, you know, there's 20 different things like every company is exploring on governance because I'd be lying if I said we know what we were doing. <laughs> I see, I see. 
Okay, and uh, my very last question would be like, I found in the my bit glossary that uh, thing it's so-called the wealth management decentralized applications. I feel like in short, tell us what is it? Yeah, um, so that's just what we categorized any type of application that's using our SDK that is just used to like manage some sort of wealth um, using like Ethereum smart contracts. So, I mean, it could be anything from just like a normal like hedge fund put into a DAO on it, or it could mm -hmm. be, you know, managing um, like types of art and digital property and stuff like that. So it's really just a broad classification for um, a financial DAP, but not related to like trading and stuff like that. Managed more on like the managing money, managing asset side of things. Okay. Cool. Okay. I, I've actually, yeah, we, we plan to be like really short, like uh, around the 50 minutes. So yeah, I, I will have like talk in, in progress bar pretty soon. So actually, mm -hmm. thank you for hosting and uh, thank you for interview. Cool. Thanks right. for having me. Okay. Mm -hmm.